everybody. Thank you for joining me here today at Rewritten Vintage Homestead. <clears throat> I'm not on the homestead today. I'm at work on my lunch hour and I didn't think I could wait until I got home uh, to talk about this. So uh, I thought you guys uh, might be interested in, in this as well. Uh, it's preparedness and uh, in the times that we live in right now, it's very important. So let's get to it. So we all know what's happening right now in uh, Ukraine. Uh, they're being invaded by Russia. And a lot of the uh, NATO nations are not joining in. They're trying to offer supplies. They're trying to impose sanctions uh, and do what they can without actually joining in uh, the fight <clears throat> to avoid another world war, basically. But uh, there's been so much talk on the news every day about uh, the possibility of Russia utilizing their nuclear weapons. And at first, it, it just seemed like, you know, a fleeting comment or two here and there. But it's becoming more and more. And so I wanted to, you know, give an unbiased view of this. Uh, I don't want this to be, I'm not trying to do any kind of scare tactic or doomsday video, but it's important that we're informed. So I went to varying news outlets um, so that I could get the best information in an unbiased view. So I believe I have four or five different news organizations and this is how they each have reported these threats, okay? The first one is from Al Jazeera. Um, their article said, arguably frustrated by the lack of progress in his war on Ukraine, President Vladimir Putin has put Russia's deterrent weapons, including its nuclear arms, on high alert. Its stockpile makes Russia the largest nuclear power in the world, closely followed by the United States. The two together possess about 93% of all nuclear weapons globally. At any given moment, one third or so are on active deployment. Um, now, Anthony Blinken, our Secretary of Defense, has commented on this and said that the United States is taking no action as far as our nuclear weapons at this point. So we've not strategically uh, done anything to prepare if something would happen. Uh, public Broadcasting said, for years some U.S. officials have worried that Putin, if faced with the prospect of losing a war in Europe, might resort to the use of non-strategic nuclear weapons, thinking it would quickly bring the conflict to an end on his terms. Now, non-strategic nuclear weapons are weapons that won't reach the United States directly. <clears throat> uh, instead, those would be more aimed at the European countries, especially Ukraine. Uh, CBS says, Russian state media on Sunday made a shocking uh, threat, even by its own extreme standards, that detailed how Moscow would annihilate U.S. cities. Yeah, this wasn't lost on, on me. <laughs> uh, after a nuclear treaty collapsed, Russian President Vladimir Putin has threatened a new Cuban Missile Crisis with deployments near the U.S.'s borders and to aim missiles at cities that command armed forces. So, uh, yeah, he's talking about, uh, you know, try, uh, maximum impact. So our larger cities and any place where our armed forces are. However, some other news um, outlets are saying, actually, what he would probably do is go after where we have our nuclear um, capabilities stored um, so that we can't defend ourselves. Fox News said Russia deployed nuclear submarines for drills this week after Putin ordered his nation's nuclear forces to be put on high alert over the weekend, a posture change the U.S. has yet to echo. So we're not answering these threats in any way. Um, and this was about this, let's see, two weeks ago, 
is when um, the high alert was uh, announced and then the week after, which would have been last week, is when he had his nuclear submarines out for drills. Um, okay, which leads us to last night. So yesterday was March the 3rd and uh, last night Russia was able to overtake the largest nuclear power plant in Europe. There was a battle uh, going on around there. You get propaganda from both sides as to what was really going on. Um, some were saying that the soldiers on Russia's side were purposely shooting at the uh, um, power plant. Others said that they were shooting at, you know, other targets and other people, Ukrainian soldiers. So, but the point of it is they were so close to that power plant that news outlets were saying it would be worse than the Chernobyl um, accident that happened many years ago. This was from CNN last night. They said no country besides Russia has ever fired upon an atomic power plant's reactor. This is the very first time in history. Now, President Zelensky from Ukraine uh, he posted on Facebook, uh, he accused the Russian troops of committing a terror attack by intentionally firing on the power plant, potentially risking the lives of millions. Russian tanks equipped with thermal imagery are shooting at atomic blocks. They know what they're shooting and they've been preparing for this attack. So it was a very tense, you know, couple hours there last night on on the news uh, according to today's news reports they're saying that you know everything is stable there's no more fighting going on there but Russia has taken it over so now Russia has access to all of that nuclear power as well so since this talk of nuclear weaponry um, has been going on for some time it got me thinking what would what would my family do what would I do? You know, what, do, what are you supposed to do? And I didn't know. I didn't have a clue. I remember when I was young in grade school, we would have bomb uh, drills. And typically that involved going out into the hall, uh, sitting against the wall with our heads between our knees and our arms over our heads. Well, they've, I'm sure, learned a lot since then. And that, that wouldn't save you, you know, by... <laughs> any means. Um, so I have a relative that works for the Department of Homeland Security and I got a hold of her and um, she directed me to the website to go to that outlines what you should do. Um, so I thought we would go over a few of those things and try to get ready just in case you know like I always talk about uh, stocking your pantry and trying to grow your own food and trying to save money and uh, all of those things go hand in hand with the type of life you want to, to live and you want to be less dependent on your government. So you also need to be less dependent on your government for your care. And this is one of those ways to get prepared. You have to inform yourself, know what's going on. So let's go over these guidelines. So one thing they stress on the website is that after a nuclear attack, the worst part of the nuclear attack is the radiation fallout. And that after a blast, you have 15 minutes before that actually reaches the ground. So that gives you a little time to do what you need to do. Um, if you're in your car, when it detonates, you are to stay in your car so that you're covered. But try to get someplace where you'll be safe within that 15 minutes. Okay, um, so a safe place is considered a brick or a concrete building like a school um, or another government building if you have one close to you, um, a brick house. If you don't have any of those things, you're going to go in your house and you're going to go to the middle part of your home away from windows and away from doors. Uh, the same thing with the brick or the concrete or the public building. You want to go to the middle of the building away from windows and doors. If you're at home, 
uh, or at work, you, if you can, you want to seal underneath your door, uh, put things around the windows, try to keep the air out, okay? Um, they said that if you are at home and, you know, once you get home, if you have food in your refrigerator, your freezer, if you, ha if you left food out on the counter that's covered uh, in containers, that's all safe to eat. But anything that's uncovered or food that's outdoors, don't eat. If you're outdoors when something detonates, you're to get flat on your stomach and keep your face down. Try to keep your mouth covered and your nose. Okay, and then remember you have 15 minutes after it detonates to get somewhere safe. Uh, once you guys come in, um, if you've been outdoors, the first thing you're supposed to do is take off your clothes. Um, I would get rid of those clothes and uh, immediately shower and bathe. If you have pets that are outdoors, you need to bring them inside and shower and bathe them the best that you can as well. The point of it is we have to get all of that stuff off of our skin as fast as we can. So once you're safely indoors, you have uh, showered and cleaned yourself up, you're to stay inside for 24 hours. Um, they recommend that you have a battery operated uh, radio so that you can stay in touch with the outside world. Uh, if a bomb would go off, there'd be electronic pulses that could interfere with your phones the internet, television, satellite, and you won't have any communication with anyone. So make sure that you have batteries on hand. Make sure that you have a battery operated radio. In order to drink water safely, you guys, you need a stockpile of bottled water that can get you through such an emergency. Um, they do not want you drinking tap water um, only for life sustaining measures. So in other words, that's your last resort. So have bottled water on hand. Even before the tap water, they would prefer you go to the toilet and not the toilet bowl, but the toilet tank and take water out of there or water out of your hot water heater, um, but not out of your faucet. Continue taking your medicines. Uh, medicines are usually in sealed containers, so you should be fine to take your medicines unless you have laid them out and they're out in the open. Then discard those. And then as soon as you can, you need to clean your house top to bottom. They recommend using a damp cloth, but if you have cleaning materials, that's fine. But they also recommend that you that you totally get rid of whatever rag or towel or uh, utensil you use to clean. So they said to put it in a plastic bag and then discard it, you know, as soon as you can so that it's not around your children or around your pets. So FEMA recommends that you have emergency kits, one for your car, one for your work, and one for your home. And each one will be different. You don't need to be as elaborate in your car and at work as you would at home. But here are a few suggested items. Uh, your prescription medications and your glasses, uh, infant formula and diapers, pet food, water, and supplies for your pets. Don't forget them. You should have cash on hand because you won't be able to get to the bank. Um, important family documents, so your insurance papers. Uh, sleeping bag, warm blankets, pillows, uh, complete change of clothing, fire extinguisher, matches in a waterproof container, uh, your personal hygiene items, paper cups, plates, disposable things, uh, paper and pencil, and books, games, magazines, puzzles for the kids to keep them occupied. Some additional items would be uh, bottled water, uh, an extra battery charger for your phone, um, moist towelettes, disinfectant cleaners, um, a battery operated radio that we discussed before, a first aid kit, a whistle so that you can signal for help if you need to. Something else at the dollar store, they have those little snap glow in the dark bracelets and necklace and things that uh, children like to play with. Those are handy to have too in case someone can't see you at night, okay? Uh, flashlight, make sure you have batteries for your flashlight, uh, can opener, uh, garbage bags and plastic ties so that you can seal everything off.
so you guys, I hope this was helpful. I hate talking about things like that, uh, this because, you know, it is sad to think about um, what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, when you watch it every night on the news, it's just heartbreaking. But to think that it can't happen here is just sticking your head in the sand. So it's best to be prepared and take care of your family. Do what you need to do um, so that you're not reliant on others to take care of you. Now you can go to ready.gov and look up all kinds of disasters from flood to fire to tornado. Um, and then they have the nuclear option here is what I was interested in because honestly I didn't know what to do, but now I do and I hope you do too. So you guys, I hope you have a great week. Keep watching the news, keep getting informed, stay busy and take care of your homestead. And I'll see you next time.